The Sorcery of Solomon, a guide to the 44 planetary pentacles of the Magician King, is the new book by Sarah Mastros, and it's published by Wiser Books. And, well, folks, I just want to add my own name to the many, many very illustrious names that you can see um, in the uh, praise to, uh, for Sorcery of Solomon segment right at the beginning of the book here. Look at that, Christopher Penchak. Uh, I don't know DTJ Morgan, but I certainly know Harold Roth and Carl Nordblom from Watkins Books, of course, and Mark Horn and Julia Torola and Rufus Opus and uh, Alison Tchaikovsky and Matt Orin. Yeah, they have all read the book and they all agree it's fantastic. Well, folks, Sarah very kindly sent me a PDF of this book um, a little while ago, um, but I, I, I wanted to show you to you in its uh, in its hard um, hard copy form, just uh, just the way I do with all these books, right? And so finally, the book arrived a couple of days ago, and uh, I'm so excited! I'm so excited, folks, to to share this this book with you, which is it's extraordinary. I'm I'm really very impressed. So Sarah Sarah's put together a a magic workbook. For anything but the absolute beginner, okay? So if you're an absolute beginner, if this is the very first book on magic that you're picking up, I'm going to say maybe spend two, three months digging around other stuff, right? Uh, uh, getting getting confused with other stuff and then come over to this. It'll, it'll put it all together for you. I am really impressed with... Uh, the way Sarah has brought together a, a, a perfect mix, in my opinion, of thorough research and, and a personal approach to magic. So just as she did with her Orphic Hymns book, she's taken some, some traditional material and she's shared a little bit of her own practice, right? So part two of this book, part one is the introduction, right? So we're learning about what Solomonic magic is. Um, we're, but, but not just, you know, uh, like, a, like a, a, a two sentence overview, but actually going into quite a lot of detail and some detail that I'd never come across before. So Sarah really has done some serious research, you know, OK, um, uh, and then uh, giving us some perspective as well. You know, Sarah uh, comes from a Jewish heritage and so she's got a very different um, a, a different view on all of this, just a, a different perspective. She, she's seeing it from a different angle uh, than than most, um, uh, let's say, people from a, a Christian background uh, w would see all of this from. And it's um, it, because she's done her research, she understands that it's um, that it's uh, it's quite a complex um, uh, topic. And and she approaches it with passion and with sensitivity. And I love this introduction. It's really very, very interesting. And it uh, it's given me a lot to chew on, um, uh, which I always appreciate from a book. But it's given me a lot to chew on from the perspective of someone also who is a teacher, right? So Sarah is a trained uh, secondary school teacher, if I understand correctly. Um, I, I may have got that wrong, but it really comes across her. Her d didactic abilities um, are fantastic she she's she's a fantastic communicator she she gets a point across really nicely and uh, she is yeah a, a, a very good teacher she uh, she will help you to feel like you understand right she's not there to confuse you she's there to clarify things and uh, and that's that's always gets my seal of approval 
So then there's this part two, the SLM method, right? So of course, uh, Sarah L. Mastros, but she never mentions that. Of course, it's Solomon, right? And or or even Samuel Little McGregor Mathers, um, uh, but but she doesn't even um, uh, uh, acknowledge that. But um, uh, S is for Solomon, uh, L is for Logos. And then M is for, I, I forget uh, at the time, uh, I, I, I can't even remember what the M stands for. It's for, it's for, it's for um, uh, magic, I think, simply magic, if I remember correctly. Yes, magic, there it is, the SLM method. And she goes into quite a lot of detail. Um, uh, uh, you know, the, where, page 23 is where it starts and here's page 67 and it's still the SLM method. Let me keep going. Oh, here we go. The Pentacles of the Moon starts on page 85. So from page 23 to page 84, it's it's her method. It's her magical method and she's giving you a full course on magic and it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And it's um, it's well researched and it uh, will give you plenty to think about, but also plenty to practice. She gives you these rituals and then these optional rituals. And uh, yeah, uh, it's 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 great. And it's, um, you know, it's clearly from the perspective of somebody who's studied magic um, in in depth and, you know, throughout the whole of history, not just not just um you know read read a few of the <laughs> the recent books on magic but has actually studied um you know studied magic in the greco egyptian world and um uh, and in the uh, in the hebrew world and um uh, but not just from the christian perspective but also from the jewish perspective as i was telling you earlier on and then she gets into the pentacles themselves right so then the pentacles each of the pentacles is described in more more or less detail and then some of the pentacles have got some exercise uh, exercises um attributed to them but then each category of pentacle so these are the pentacles of the moon uh, let me see yeah this is already <laughs> sorry about this folks here we go uh so then at the end of the section for the pentacles of the moon right this is the section on the pentacles of the moon and then you get the exercises related to those pentacles of the moon or oh, i've just lost those pages okay but uh, you you get the general idea and then you move on to uh to to, to the next ones right the, the the pentacles of mercury of course um uh, and um uh, and then yeah and each pentacle is described if there's anything interesting about that particular pentacle then it'll be described in the text about the pentacle she'll give you some ideas on how you can use a little bit of the magic that she's taught you over here, right? Uh, related, relating to these pentacles, and uh, and you can put it all into into practice. And by the end of all of this, you will you'll actually have a little um, a little a uh, 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 rather large magic book which she refers to like a like a magical servitor this book that you're that you're creating right that's the uh, that's one of the exercises well you could say that it's like an overarching a exercise it's that you're creating this book filled with pentacles um, and every time you you draw or work with a pentacle for the first time then you draw it in this book uh, but uh, let me just read you this this page which i think is going to give you a good idea of what you're getting into here. If you've successfully completed the exercises in this book, let me just um, zoom in a bit. You should have a basic understanding of the 44 Mathers Pentacles, as well as a, f a solid vocabulary of Hebrew names of power. You've developed a relationship with Solomon, the magician king, as well as some beginner skills in dream incubation, trance journey, and spirit communication. You've written many awakened pentacles and magically deployed them using a variety of techniques and kavanot, which she describes. Uh, perhaps more, most importantly, 
You've birthed a powerful magical familiar, your awakened and enchanted magic book of pentacles. As you continue to work with the pentacles, record what you learn in your book, what do you wish you'd done differently? What intentions do you hold when you're using the pentacles and so on and so forth? Uh, but yes, this, this first paragraph over here really gives you an idea of what you'll have achieved by the time you finish reading this book, or by the time you finish practicing with this book. So yeah, um, overall, I'm just going to say that this is... Um, this is a, a a gift to the to the magical community. I think that whether you're just getting started, um, uh, as I say, you will need to have kind of started already uh, to um, to really benefit from um, at least a lot of what Sarah has to offer in here. Um, if it's if it is the first book on magic that you ever read, I'm sure you'll get a lot out of it. Uh, a bit of it might seem a little confusing, um, uh, but um, confusing just, just from the perspective of, you know, how is this even possible kind of thing, right? Uh, she's talking about this stuff as if it's real. And, and well, that's because it is, <laughs> but uh, uh, it might be confusing if, to somebody who, who doesn't just doesn't have any experience of, of, of magic at all, right? Like zero, zero experience. This is why I'm saying if it's your very first book, maybe, maybe, Maybe get a couple of rituals under your belt first, but um, uh, for everyone else, for everyone else, from the almost beginner to the advanced practitioner uh, looking for um, just further insight into Solomonic magic in general, and of course, very specifically, um, the, um, the, 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 well, the, 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 Samuel L. McGregor Matters, Greater Key of Solomon. Um, uh, this is this is the place to go, folks. This is um, this is a terrific book. I'd be surprised not to see this in my top ten of the year at the end of twenty twenty four. Um, it's the first book this year that I can say that with any amount of confidence. Um, yeah, very very good stuff. And congratulations to Sarah. And congratulations also to Wiser Books for um, daring to make, uh, let's say, um, a slightly more advanced book um, ad available to a wider public. Um, this is, yeah, terrific stuff. Uh, yeah, I've left links down in the description for anyone who'd like to pick a copy up. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you very soon with another video. Take care of yourselves. See you very soon. Bye bye.